So I would invite families forward who are participating in the service of confirmation. Um, parents in front of the rail, youth behind the rail, you will note that your, your name is where? I will grab a few things. Now as a reminder, confirmation is the act of our youth um, claiming their faith for themselves. When they were babies, all of, all of our youth were, uh, went through infant baptism. So probably when they were a few months, maybe a year, maybe a couple years old, their parents brought them in. They basically said, yes, we will raise this child in such a way that they will know who God is. And we all promised, yeah, and we're going to help, right? And now today, these youth, after going through anywhere from 16 to 21 lessons over a year, and a year of COVID, um, are coming today to claim their faith as their own. So, I did the dastardly thing of asking them to face all y'all. But you need to see them. These are your new people. I mean, they've been here forever, you know, since the beginning of their lives. But now they're claiming adulthood in Christ. And their parents are still acting as support, just as you are. So, where am I? Okay. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift. It's offered to us without price. And now through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing in us and for us, and we affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. So today we present Ella Bradford, Macy Mosier, Jason Mueller, and Olivia Roberts. Very dramatic, isn't it? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives. We ask this, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. And we share in the response, if it's there, all praise to you. All praise to you, Eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. So since the earliest of times, the vows of Christian baptism have consisted first of the renunciation of sin and all that is evil, and then the profession of faith and loyalty to Christ. So, make sure I can see you, everyone. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you sponsors who stand in support and those of you who are being confirmed in faith today to profess those vows spoken on your behalf at your baptism. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, say, we do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. 
Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms? Oops, I think I said that already. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord? in union with the church what Christ has opened to people of all ages, all nations, and all races. If so, say I do. So addressing just the confirmands now, those of you being confirmed today, according to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, say I will. Parents, sponsors, I ask you now, Will you, who sponsor these candidates, support and encourage them in their Christian life? If so, say, I will. Now I'd ask that one parent from each family come to receive a bowl of the water we have blessed. And you may set it before your students. And now, speaking to the congregation. Now, the people of the congregation, do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, say, we do. We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who will walk in the way that leads to life. Now let us all join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments as we ask three questions. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. With that. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Okay. Go ahead and put fingers in here and just do the cross. Yeah. All right. Now turn around and they will lay hands on you. Okay. Ella, Suzanne Bradford, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. May see Mosier, remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. All right, now turn. Let your parents set a hand. Macy Mosier, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jason, remember your baptism and be thankful. Jason John Mueller, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Olivia, 
Remember your baptism and be thankful. Olivia Roberts, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. People of the congregation, I invite you also, remember your baptism. Be thankful. Amen. So now we receive you into the United Methodist Church. So we ask you a question. Confirmands, as members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, say, I will. And now, as members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service, and your witness? If so, say, I will. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and your care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And please join in the congregational response. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Can you believe it? That's pretty much it. But before I share our final blessing for these families, uh, the church has a gift we would like to give to each of our youth. We have a new Bible because you're not little kids anymore. You need something that you can chew on a little bit better. So this is a Wesley study Bible. So it shares more about who John Wesley was, what his thinking was, um, and I hope that you will enjoy it. It's the same Bible I have. Mine is all marked up. I hope in a short amount of time yours will be all marked up too. Okay. So, a final blessing. I'll give Anne a moment. Thank you, Anne. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and in peace. Amen. Let us welcome them. So please, everybody, join us for cake in the parlor. We'll grab a quick photo at the cake table, too, maybe. Yeah? Did anybody else grab photos? Ah, we'll continue on. Please be seated. <laughs>